Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM has indicated that a bidding process for the repowering and repurposing of the Kamati power station could be initiated within the coming two months. Terence Kuma joins me to discuss the significance of this development. Hi Terence. Morning Chanel. Why is the Kamati power station a priority target for ESCOM? Well, Kamati is amongst the group of four power stations, the others being Camden, Hendrina, and Hurtflay that are up for decommissioning in the next few years. And Kamati is one of the smaller and one of the older power stations and has, has been slowly decommissioning itself almost over the last few years. I think there's only one unit remaining at Kamati. So it is a prime target for this repowering and uh, uh, repurposing uh, initiative that ESCOM has launched and it will be for ESCOM a demonstration of the, uh, the ability to, to use these power station sites in a different way, in a way that helps their decarbonization ambitions. They've set a, a, in th a principal goal of becoming net, a net zero utility by 2050 and this is a prime site uh, to try and showcase uh, this ability to transition away from coal into other uh, uh, technologies and to use the land in a way that sustains communities and jobs. What model will ESCOM be pursuing and how will this be financed? Well, at this stage, we don't know those answers, but the model will definitely be a public-private partnership. What exact form or precise form it takes is unknown. It might be a build, operate, own and transfer type initiative with private sector. We do know that ESCOM will not be looking to repower these power stations with coal. That would go contrary to the ambition of uh, the, uh, becoming a net zero utility. In this case, it seems that the, the initial targets will be to use solar photovoltaic technology, battery energy storage, and then there's obviously repurposing opportunities around these power stations as well, uh, essentially using these uh, facilities for training and education facilities, especially technical and vocational training, as well as agriculture. But the exact model is unknown, other than it won't be financed probably off the ESCOM balance sheet. We know that that's very distressed. It will be a private a partnership with the private sector and uh, ESCOM is looking for a transaction advisor at the moment. And so that model will become known in future. Then the financing of this is also, uh, it's premature to say how this will be financed. But again, not off ESCOM's balance sheet, as we know, it's highly uh, de-stressed and stressed. So it will be a, a private money and development finance uh, capital that will come in. We know that there is quite a lot of appetite from the development finance institution for the repowering and repurposing initiative. These are happening not only in South Africa, but around the world where there's uh, old coal-fired power stations and where there are, are coal exit plans. A number of countries have already announced uh, exit dates for coal. So uh, there is this development finance available. So it's going to be a combination of private money, um, ESCOM pro pro uh, providing more uh, sort of in-kind equity in the form of the land, the, the old power station site, the infrastructure that surrounds it, mm -hmm. and then development finance. What power stations will be next and what technologies or options are likely to be considered? Yes, ESKIM's indicated that there could be parallel uh, request for proposal processes. They want to use Kamati as the uh, poster child, as the demonstration case, but these other power stations that I mentioned, Kamart, uh, other than Kamati, Camden, Hendrina, Hurtflay, are also going to be decommissioned. And uh, there are various options being looked at for those sites. We've, the ESCOM's completed social uh, impact studies looking at what jobs are still re residual in those areas, not only directly at the power station, but at the mines and within the communities, what sort of businesses are affected. And they're looking at various options for these power stations too. By 2030, ESCOM is going to decommission up 10 gigawatts of power uh, capacity from coal. So it's not just confined to these four power stations that would have to be rolled out to other power stations as, as the decade unfolds. 
And uh, uh, ISKIM is looking at various options other than the solar PV and the battery energy storage. Uh, there's uh, been proposals around uh, fuel switching, so switching to uh, natural gas from coal or to green hydrogen uh, from coal. Those are, those are two options that are being considered. Then there's obviously solar, battery energy storage, uh, you know, using, using these sites optimally because they are already fully integrated into the grid. So to use that ability uh, that they are able to evacuate uh, power immediately, use that capacity, that infrastructure to, to get some sort of electricity value out of these old sites. But then possibly the bigger job impacts might be the uh, the repurposing of these stations, especially around water use. You know, these power stations are very water intensive and there might be an opportunity to divert that water into agricultural activities. And as I mentioned earlier, vocational, educational training, especially technical training, these are, these are good locations to do that sort of uh, uh, skills development. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of potential creativity, and the good news is that there's also the technologies now that are, make these all possible at, uh, at low cost. ESCOM sees this program as core to ensuring that the transition to renewables is a just one. Yes, although some people might say that the transition to renewables is not inevitable, in many ways, you know, the cost the compression that's taken place around wind and solar and what is happening now in battery energy storage and what is likely to happen around green hydrogen in the future is making this more and more uh, likely. Also, ESKIM has this ambition to be net zero and a number of uh, its customers, big, large mining and industrial customers also are outlining net zero ambitions. So technically, uh, the transition away from coal more and more is getting, gaining uh, prominence and support. And the costs, as I mentioned earlier, are coming down around some of these technologies. So there is traction technically. But the issue is socially. Uh, the coal-fired plants have been important uh, generators of jobs and of business opportunity in these locations, which are, are in rural areas, uh, mostly located in the Pumalanga province of South Africa. And we saw that in the State of the Nation address, the president made it quite clear that the repowering and repurposing should be part of a just transition. So uh, South Africa hasn't really defined what the just transition will be. In some ways, we're going to be learning by doing, especially with the Kamati demonstration project. And it's going to be an important test case. I think uh, generally there is support from all constituencies, from business, as I mentioned, uh, from uh, labor, which is obviously a little bit more uh, circumspect and skeptical about this. but. That they want, I think ultimately Labour wants uh, net uh, gains in jobs, or if they're not going to be net gains, at least uh, uh, some additional decent jobs in these areas, you know, primarily unionised jobs if possible. And, uh, you know, if, if there are going to be major job losses, then there has to be some cushioning of these workers um, as well. So there's, there's those three elements that I think Labour would be demanding as we move into this uh, transition from renewables, from coal to renewables. Um, and uh, so, so labor is on board if it delivers, I think, uh, those, those components. And then those communities are obviously very vulnerable. And uh, here again, there's businesses that live off these power stations, live off the coal mines, need to have some sort of new lease on life. So it's gonna be very important that ESKIMS finds a way to demonstrate that this is possible, but it can't be, as I mentioned right up front, it's not an ESKIM only project. This is going to be a public private partnership and uh, it's, it's going to have the full social and uh, economic benefits that this could bring. We need to crowd in more actors, more voices and have everyone around the table to have uh, the maximum benefit socially not just from an energy transition perspective and potential new economic activity, but uh, from a worker and community perspective. This is a very important uh, uh, touchstone of that. And Kamati is going to be the demonstration case of this. Thank you. 
That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.